Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to design a 10 unit PMMA bridge using a pre designed full arch FP1 from my library. Normally I would just go and select an atomic waxup, but in this example I want to show you that it's possible to bring up a waxup design even though we selected an atomic crown and an atomic pontic. Now I want to select PMMA. This is going to be a cement retained bridge, so I don't need to select any anything here. It's just as if it was a normal bridge on a prep. So I need an extra gingiva scan. Now I select OK. I select the retainers, pressing Ctrl left click. And now I select the Pontex. I select Shift left click to select the other, the other teeth. Now I select Ctrl left click and now Shift left click. After everything is selected, I save the project and we select design. Now bring up the scans, make sure the orientation is in the correct viewpoint and go next. For this case we don't have any pictures or pre-ops to follow, so I'll just skip this step. Now I select the margins. I always like to double check with the correct draw tool because if you just select the margin sometimes the points are not in the optimal position. I do the same for every single, in this case, abutment. You see here where the detection went a bit off course. You can clearly tell that it's off the margin. That's why I always like to double check and go again with the correct with the correct tool. Now, because this is a cement retained bridge, we need to make sure that the path of insertion doesn't create any undercuts, so we don't end up like with uh, open margins. You see on this one, you can tell you don't clearly see the margin all around. So basically you need to find a point of view where you can see all the margins clearly. Something like this should be fine to make sure we don't have any open margins. Then we select set current view. Now we go next. Now select your preferred gap spacing and go next. Now as you can see this happens many times where I'm misplaced. I could bring a preset like I did in a previous video but in today's video I want to show you how to use pre-designed FP1 to do faster bridges especially for try-ins and PMMAs it's just amazing. So we need to go to expert mode, go to tools and go to add remove mesh. Here you're gonna select up scan and we're gonna load and I'm going to choose an upper full arch FP1 that I designed previously. And you can get this if you get my new library Linea. You'll get all these extra files with the library. Now we select open. It doesn't really matter what you choose here. And now at this stage we place the walks up more or less in the correct position for now. I always like to guide myself first to place the centrals. They're going to define the rest of the, of the bridge. Because in this case we don't have any pictures and we don't have any pre-op, I'll just try to place it in the most optimal place. I'll try to place it correctly by using other features like this this reach, but because this is going to be a try-in, later on after the try-in the dentist can check if the placement is correct. I, I usually like to start by placing the centrals in the most optimal position. I try to make sure that I have the least overjet possible. And as you can see here, we're gonna have a gap between the premolar and the molar. I might need to stretch it out a bit. I actually need to allow resizing, so I can change the sizing of the of the wax up. And now I can make it a bit longer like that, so I can close as much as I can the, the distal gap. Now because the client only wants 10 teeth here, you can see that the occlusion is not the most ideal because you can see these open gaps, but I don't think we have any other solution. So after you are happy with the positioning of the bridge, you go OK. You left click on the box up, you right click on top of it and you go edit mesh because you're going to have to remove some of the teeth that we are not going to use, like the molars. Just do a box and select delete. Do the same on the other side. And now select this option, select by click on the surface. So I just need to left click it to select the whole bridge and then we select close holes like that. Select OK. Now we remove the molars and we left click on it and we use this option so we can freeform it before doing the walks up calculation. 
Now it's always easier if we use the paint and pull technique. So I'm just gonna paint everything that I want to to move. So everything that is green is gonna move, and the yellow part is gonna it's gonna deform to accommodate the changes. So when I pull the green apart, the yellow part is gonna stretch, and the blue part is gonna stay in the same exact position. If we don't make the yellow part a bit bigger, you're gonna see that it's gonna stretch just that tiny bit. So I always like to increase it as much as I can, like that. And we can actually go to advanced editing and we can paint in yellow the other parts we want to change as well. I'll try to maintain the centrals symmetrical so I don't want them to deform too much. And probably I'll just paint a bit of the cannon to make it deform a bit as well. So at this stage we can just pull it out and you see if I pull all the way back the lateral is going to be too distorted so for that we just pull a bit to the distal and then we press Control shift so we can resize the green part and not rely and not rely only on the yellow part to stretch the as you can see it's growing as well here look we kind of need to do a bit of both just to spread the resizing across uh, multiple teeth. I also want to bring it in a bit, like that. You see, the occlusion is not going to be ideal. You, you have these gaps. Probably would need to add another tooth on each side to make this in the correct occlusion placement. But this is going to be a 10 unit bridge and we're going to stick to the to the number of teeth. Now on this side this is almost perfect as you can see it's, all, it's already in contact almost but I still want to just make sure I have them in the correct orientation. You can rotate if you if you control left click you can rotate the green part as you can see look. Check with the gengiva. Now you go back to simple editing you go paint moving parts you select reset and now Paint just these premolars, just like this. Okay, I think I'm I'm happy with this. Now you go back to to all to to the other tools, and now I just want to make sure that I bring this part out because, as you can see, the abutment is already trespassing the embrasure of of these teeth, and probably this one as well. I need to do something about it. So what I do here is basically. I'll just use these tools and bring out the embrasure. Just bring it out without distorting too much. And probably use the bigger one as well, like that. And here as well. Okay, I, th I think for now it's manageable. And we're gonna sort the rest after it merges to the abutments. Now we can sort out the distal parts of the bridge because we cut off the molars and then we close the holes. You're gonna have this uh, formity on the distal. Just make sure it looks nice and, the, and you create a nice contact on the distal, just like this. So it's looking nice. Press OK. And now I just need to delete these teeth. So you go to, you right click on the background, you select delete reconstructions and as you can see you have all this uh, library teeth full pontics. You just press OK and it's going to delete them. Now we only have the walks up. And because we did that, because we deleted the teeth and, and we brought the walks up scan, if you right click on the back you see that the next step is walks up calculation. Whenever you have a highlighted option is because it's the next step if you went to the normal workflow from wizard. So if I go to wizard it's going to automatically do the walks up calculation. After it's calculated, we just do the final touches. So I want to make this embrasure look better because it was a bit deformed. The abutment, as, as you can see, they are showing like the shape of them because it's minimal thickness. We need always to increase the thickness on the back to make sure that the bridge is strong. So just thicken up all the back of the bridge. 
especially because on this FP1 I kind of made the, the buckle in brushes quite deep so we have better aesthetics on the buckle so to ensure extra strength we thicken up we focus on the thickness on the back of the bridge and in the front of the bridge we focus on the aesthetics so now we smooth it out and also we need to make sure that we have contacts everywhere so I might need to thicken up this kind of it's not going to be pretty but it's going to be functional so we need to make sure that we have contacts in every teeth we want a balanced contact points across all the bridge now we can adapt the occlusion so usually I like to go 0 0.2 so we have a bit of room to smooth the surfaces And now finally the entangler surface. Usually for tryings you just go zero. You should have no pressure on the soft tissue. So you can check the passivity in the mouth easily without having to compress the soft tissue. But if this was temporary bridge that had to stay in the mouth for months or weeks and if the purpose is to shape the soft tissue to accommodate an FP1 then you should do like the socketed shape on the entangler surface of this bridge. So I'm going to show you how it would look like if it was a normal PMMA to stay for a few weeks or months. So first I go and do, and because you want to do a bit of pressure, I'm just going to select 0.7. So it means that it's going to be 0.7 millimeters inside the soft tissue. And I can show you that by using the cut view. If I go here and I check the, the length between soft tissue and the point, you see it's a 0.7. I would just need to, to select a perpendicular point like that and it's 0 0.7 across the whole entangled surface. With this you can make sure that the pressure is evened out across the bridge. What you need to do is to smooth it out so you, you end up always to have like areas with more pressure and others with less pressure. But anyways, we also need to sort out the emergence of the crowns. You, should, you, you cannot have such big roots coming out like this, so you need to round up the transition here. The entangled surface shouldn't ever be concave, it should be at least flat. So the entangled surface should never be a concavity. It should be either flat, like that, or convex, like this, like ovate. Now I'm just gonna smooth the areas, smooth the palatal. Just gonna try to bring this neck a bit more out because because I pull this one out I should bring this one out as well just to be in the same buccal corridor where like this is easier that this one a bit more inside and now finally I'm gonna show you guys a technique that it's pretty useful so you go to anatomic you select the paint and pull feature. Now you do circles on the pontics like that. Just a just a tap, you see? I just tapping. We can just to to do like socket shape, we just need to bring them up this. See that all of them are coming up just a tiny bit, just so we don't need to do it manually. And at the same time, we go paint again, we go reset. And we do now very thin brush just to align between the teeth like this so on the embrasures and now you pull them in like that you see now we have nice ovate shapes on the pontics on the entangled surface and now we just need to smooth everything out like this just gonna adjust the distal contact of this one just need to make sure it's looking nice. And this is how you can do a nice looking bridge on a big case quite quickly outside of the normal workflow. Now this technique shines with FP3 cases. So watch this video next where I show you that you can do a full arch in less than 10 minutes.